Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today we're going to be looking at restoring this vintage Empire Strikes Back Scout Walker box. Now I was recently uh, sent this by Daniel and he said that it was something that he had in his collection he didn't need uh, and thought that I might be able to do something with it. As you can see it's a fairly battered old Empire Strikes Back box but I think we can do something to it to make it sort of much more displayable. As it stands you can see uh, that it's actually all sort of come apart. The glue down the side has uh, sort of been either been torn or it's just sort of given up and the rest of the box has then sort of collapsed into this mess. Nothing is particularly flat on it. If we look at the top flap here you can see it's all bowed and bent and then if we look at the bottom as well you can see uh, the uh, proof of purchase has been cut away from it. Uh, that's not something that we're going to replace. I just want to sort of uh, flatten this out so that we can actually be displayed again because this is a very common thing that happens with these old boxes. Obviously uh, at the time you could send away proof of purchases to uh, get other toys and so lots of these are missing. I actually quite like that. It just shows a bit of life to the box. But at the moment, this can't be displayed just because of the state it's in. So uh, let's see what we can do. I'm sure that something can be done and I'm sure that it can be made to look a whole lot better. Uh, we'll give it a full sort of going over and see what uh, the problems are and see what we can do to solve it. I've just flattened the box out onto my worktop here just so I can see really sort of what's going on. I did actually include the instructions. So you can see here, this is the uh, Empire Strikes Back version of the instruction sheet. This is actually in fine condition. There's a few little creases to it, but overall that looks quite nice. So I'm just going to put that to one side and I'll put that in the box once the, everything is sort of back together. But the box itself, you can see, doesn't lie particularly flat. It's obviously been sort of crunched up over the years, so nothing is particularly flat. There's a lot of creasing and a few sort of tears and bits of damage. If we look at this flap at the bottom here, you can see that it is torn away. There is also a hole in one side of the box. I think it's just about here uh, that uh, something is sort of punched through so there is a hole there and then overall it's just in a bit of a mess. There's uh, bits of sellotape as well as you can see here so there's an old bit of sellotape that's uh, sort of coming loose uh, and yeah really it's not looking great and it can't be displayed. So what we were going to do is I'm going to give everything a good clean uh, just using some lighter fluid and a piece of kitchen towel just to wipe away any sort of surface dirt on it. Then we need to try and flatten it uh, because it can't really be worked on while it's this sort of uh, wobbly and bent. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to iron it. And I've shown this before in some of my restorations. Basically, if you get an iron relatively hot and put a tea towel underneath and a tea towel over the top of everything and gently iron it, you'll be able to sort of soften the cardboard and we can sort of flatten this down. But before we do that, let's clean off the dirt. So what we're going to do is uh, take a piece of kitchen towel, put some lighter fluid on that and then gently rub over the surface of the uh, cardboard to remove any sort of dust and grime that has accumulated on it over the years. I've let everything dry. The box is starting to look a little bit clearer. There wasn't a huge amount of dust and dirt on it, but enough that it's worth doing. We do have quite a lot of sellotape left on the box in various places. Now this has dried out completely. There is almost no glue left on it at all. Uh, I've tried uh, heating it up with a hairdryer. Sometimes heating it up with a hairdryer can loosen the glue, but on this it is so dry it made absolutely no difference. So we're going to have to go down again the lighter fluid route uh, and basically squirt a whole load of lighter fluid around the uh, sort of sellotape and try and get it underneath and this should loosen any of the glue that's left there. I'm hoping that we can take most of these bits of sellotape off without damaging the card underneath. Sometimes it does take a bit of the print off you just have to sort of live with that uh, but we'll see what we can do. So a liberal squirting of lighter fluid on it. Let the cardboard get really quite soaked in it. The uh, lighter fluid does evaporate in the end so it will look like it's sort of making the card wet but give it half an hour and it will have evaporated off. Then we'll just uh, work our way around these bits of sellotape and see if we can get rid of it without causing any issues. 
Yeah, I think that's come off not too bad. You can see this is the sort of glued residue, the white stuff that's left on it. We might be able to get a bit more of that off if we just put a little bit more lighter fluid on some kitchen towel and gently give this a rub. It should remove it. I'm trying to make as little damage on this as I possibly can, but you can see what the glue does to the sellotape. It really is quite awful stuff after all of these years, so we'll try our best to get rid of it. I don't think that looks too bad. There's a few little marks. I may uh, go, come back to that later on, but overall that has come off quite nicely. So there's a lot more of these bits of sellotape to remove. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all of those. Uh, just lots of light fluid and uh, taking it as, as slow as you can. After about half an hour's work I've managed to get all of the bits of tape off. They were mainly on this sort of top edge and you can see they've not really left any new marks. These old sort of uh, creases and that are just what's on the box and that here is a big pile of tape. So I've removed all of these bits of tape. You can see the sort of glue goes this strange sort of white uh, colour once you've added the uh, lighter fluid to it but that means it's actually then quite easy to wipe off of the box. Again just put a bit more lighter fluid on a uh, kitchen towel and uh, rub away and you can see this, this is what comes off. So yeah, the box is now looking a lot neater just having taken those bits of tape off but what we need to do is get it a lot flatter. So as I say I'm now going to iron this box. So I'm just going to use a normal iron. I'm going to put a tea towel underneath the box and I'm going to put a tea towel over the top of the box as well and sort of iron onto the tea towel. Uh, not on a massively hot heat sort of medium heat. Just gently warm this card up and it will slowly flatten as we warm it up. So I'm going to work my way across the entire box doing all of the flaps, every single piece of it until I've got it as flat as it possibly possibly can be. Then we can start repairing some of the issues and some of the tears that are sort of very sort of predominant on the edges and on the flaps. You can see this one has got quite a bad tear to it but uh, yeah let's get the box as flat as we possibly can first.
Okay, so after a good iron, it's looking a whole lot flatter. It's still not perfect, but it is getting there. Once we actually start to sort of construct the box again, that should straighten up any of the sort of the leftover sort of curves and bends. This box was particularly damaged. Uh, I've not worked on one that's been doing this sort of damage for a very long time. You always feel that uh, you're not going quite far enough, but actually when you sort of finish and start putting it back together, it does start to look a whole lot better. The next thing we're going to do is uh, try and start sorting out some of the rips and tears. It's mainly torn where there are sort of flaps and uh, folds along the top. So you can see here that there's quite a big tear. Another one on this side. Now to fix that we're going to be using some gummed brown tape. So this is uh, what you can buy online. It's basically got a water activated gum on the back of it. So it's brown tape with uh, water activated gum on it. I've cut a few small strips here and I'm just going to start sort of uh, working over the tops of the uh, worst of the tears. I'm going to be working on the back of this box initially then I'll go over to the front and tidy things up but initially we want to sort of strengthen the back of it and everything on the inside is going to be hidden. You can see there is a tear here and what I've done is I've lined up all of the bits of the tear so that it's sort of nice and neat on this side. I'm going to get some of this gum tape. I've just got a sort of small piece like this that should fit quite nicely over where the tear is. I want to go quite far either side as well to make sure this is a nice strong fix and then I have a bit of kitchen towel that I've just uh, wetted with some water. You can lick this stuff but you do tend to have a little bit of acid in your uh, sort of saliva. So just put a bit of tap water onto that. I can then press this over the tear and it should stick. It sticks really quite firmly to stuff. It's the sort of thing that you would use if you're framing pictures to hold the back of the uh, pictures in place. But you can see that sticks really quite nicely. I'm just going to work my way around all of these tears doing this as neat as I can on the back of the box. Then we'll turn it over and try and fix some of the issues on the front. But uh, for now let's get this back section working. As you can see I've now put patches on all of the worst tears. Uh, that one was actually this sort of punched hole through the side of the box. I've uh, pushed the box back into sort of place as best I can so that the uh, print is on the outside and the bits of cardboard are on the inside. And I've just stuck a bit over the uh, back of that. You can see it's still a bit damp. I'm now going to let all of these dry so that the uh, glue has time to set. Then we can turn it over and I'm going to start carefully repairing the opposite sides of these uh, using some EVA glue which is like PVA glue but it's the uh, sort of non acidic version of PVA glue and gently pushing it bits in with brushes and that to uh, sort of reinforce where these bits have been repaired. I think we should end up with quite a sturdy box then but for now I'm just going to let this all dry so that the glue goes off properly. I've turned the box over so I can start working on the other side now. So you can see here we have some rips where uh, this is the other side of, of where I've already put the gum tape. You can see the uh, cardboard has ripped a bit and the, the top is sort of trying, trying to split away from the backing of the cardboard. Now what we're going to do is uh, glue that back down. I have here some EVA glue. Now this is, as I say, it's like PVA glue but this is the non-acidic version that's used for restoring books. It's called EVA glue. Uh, you can get this from uh, sort of on eBay or Amazon places like that. Very useful to have. So what I've done is I've put a little bit in a pot here and I've got a very fine brush. So what I'm going to do is going to get some of this on the brush and I'm going to start pushing it into all of the areas where the cardboard is starting to split apart and just sort of carefully paint it in and then we'll push this card back together. You may need to put a weight of something on it like a, a book, just something to uh, hold the uh, glue in place while everything dries. But it's uh, going to do a very good job of holding this all back together. You're sort of re-laminating the uh, cardboard that's torn apart. So we'll do a bit here. Just keep on painting it on till we've got all the surfaces covered. And then I'll push this together and we'll wipe off the excess. So now we can start pushing that down. 
it's already looking good so we've just got a tissue here I'll just push away some of that excess wipe it off and we'll push that down so I say that's it's you might need a book or something on it just to hold it in place while it dries but that should glue quite nicely I'm going to do this all over this uh, box because you can see there's loads of places where the uh, cardboard is splitting like that and I'm just going to slowly work my way around the entire box until I've got all of these pieces glued back in place you can see there's another piece here that's done exactly the same so I'm going to push in some of the glue and we'll just sort of work our way around the box it could take an hour or so to do and then I'm going to leave it overnight let everything dry make sure everything is dried for as long as it possibly can and it should start to uh, really feel like quite a firm box then It's now a day later I've let everything dry and you can see I can actually put the box sort of roughly back together it's got some structure to it it's now starting to feel pretty solid so we can do the next piece which is to start actually gluing the, the rest of it back together on the bottom of the box there are these flaps that originally would have been glued together you can see there's actually a little bit of uh, glue left there and also on this flap so what we're going to do is glue these two pieces together like that and then I'm going to clamp them or just sort of hold them until the glue sets we also need to do the ones on this side as well you can see again there's used to be some glue here and there used to be some glue on this flap so those two need gluing together and I'll do those uh, without gluing the side of the box together just so that it's sort of got some structure first then once those are fully set we can fold this box together get all of the pieces at the bottom sort of lined up and we will glue the side together but first off let's glue these two flaps at the bottom back together again for this I'm going to be using some EVA glue so I have some in a pot here and I've also got my brush uh, really it's just a case of following where the old glue was uh, you can see clearly there's a mark on the bottom of this and uh, lining everything up neatly so that it sort of lines up uh, as it should and we've got nice uh, square corners uh, it's fairly straightforward to do because you can actually just follow the cut lines of the card so so all I'm going to do I'll get some glue on this brush I'm going to get quite a large amount because we want this to glue really quite firmly and I'll paste this along the bottom and then uh, we'll push it together and just let everything dry again it will take a few hours uh, all of this stuff takes quite a lot of time so you just have to be very patient with it uh, there's no point rushing uh, when fixing things like this just to let everything go at its own pace so there you go there's some glue on there I'm going to line that up push it down and in this instance I'm going to use the pot of glue just to hold that in place and we'll let that set then I'll do this one in a sort of half an hour's time and then once that's all done we can glue the sides of the box together P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. now that these two pieces have had time to glue and the sort of glue has firmly gone off we can actually Put the box back together so I'm going to fold these two pieces in you can see they sort of interlock together I'm then going to put some EVA glue along this join here and hold it together again with books from the inside or some weights from the inside until that is fully set and then uh, once that's done uh, the box should be relatively firm and we can start working on some of the other areas so uh, let's put some glue along this edge and uh, get it all stuck together The glue is now dry so I've uh, put the box back together to give it that extra bit of strength I've actually got some uh, replacement inserts now if you go to uh, Darren's website which is called replicator boxes and inserts he sells all sorts of replacement box parts and you can actually get the uh, inner cardboard pieces that would go inside this original ATST box so uh, I've got a set of those you can see there's a piece in here this is what the scout walker rests on and then on the top we have this piece that actually just sort of rests on top of the scout walker if I was to put it in the box but all of these add that extra bit of sort of structure inside and give the box a little bit more sort of rigidity and hold it all together so you can see now we can put this box 
down, put the lid down, and there we go. The box is actually starting to look pretty respectable. It's certainly something that you could display. Now, if I was doing this just for myself, I would actually leave it at this state and just say that that is uh, good enough. I like the wabby sabby sort of look. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see there's a lot of uh, damage around the edge still. We've still got lots of uh, sort of veining and cracks in the uh, black part of uh, the box. Now, a, a lot of people when they watch my channel want to see things taken that little bit further. So I'm now gonna go ahead and we'll try and remove some of these sort of white crack marks that are around the edge of it. Normally, I wouldn't bother doing it. I, I say this box to me, looks perfectly good it's pretty square it's still got a few dents and marks in it but as, a, as far as a displayable piece goes it would display very nicely but we might as well take this one stage further and uh, see if we can improve these sort of uh, crack marks and little splits in the box it is something that can be done I don't know if I would recommend everybody having a go at doing this because as I say this sort of box in this condition looks perfectly good but uh, as this is for a video about restoring a box let's do it anyway and uh, I'll see what, how much we can improve this uh, getting rid of these little lines. So the way I'm going to try and hide these is actually to paint them. Now this box was originally printed it's actually got a fairly matte finish to it and all that's happened is over the years uh, the, the outer printing has been sort of worn away and as it's been bent and crinkled uh, the actual print sort of is just basically degrades and falls off uh, and really the painting it is a sort of a, a good way of hiding it as I say this is something I probably wouldn't do on my own boxes but people want to see sort of different ways and different ideas of things that you can do so I just thought I would show this here I have uh, basically some uh, matte acrylic paint this is uh, Vallejo model color uh, 950 black this is a matte black I'm going to get a bit of that on a brush with some water just so it's not too thick and very carefully paint along the edges the end result will be that you will hardly notice it uh, I think if you were sort of looking very closely you would see it but it depends whether you want this sort of the the white part of the crack showing or do you want it as black so that it sort of is a little bit more sort of invisible it's all up to you I'm not going to say whether this is the right or wrong thing to do uh, but let's go ahead and we'll do it and I'll, I'll do this edge here and I'll show you the end result and then I might go around and do the rest of the box but let's just do one edge and uh, we'll see what it looks like So here is the whole of the front of the box done. You can see I've done as many of these sort of lines on the black outer bit as I possibly could. There's a few inside the actual sort of photograph, but I've left those because uh, they're much harder to sort of deal with. And really just taking away the, uh, the white around the edge of it really does make this look quite a lot sort of tidier and quite a lot neater. If I turn it round, you can see on the side, this is a side I haven't done. So that's got all of the cracks and all of the sort of uh, white marks over it. You can see that looks quite messy likewise on the back and that side so I've just done this front portion for the moment just so you can see what sort of effect you can have on it as I say this is not for everyone I personally I prefer the boxes just sort of a bit more scruffy but if you want to make it a little bit sort of neater for display then do that always have a tissue to hand to wipe away any sort of excess and try not to put too much on you're really just trying to put it on the cracks and the sort of the white parts uh, but uh, yeah it does do uh, quite a good job if you want to sort of make these boxes just look that little bit neater and there we go that is it for for this video as you can see I've gone from having a very beaten and battered box to having something that is perfectly displayable it's still rough around the edges it has that sort of wabby sabby charm but it is a nice box and I can quite happily display that with a scout walker next to it and it just looks really great so I need to say a big thank you to Daniel who very kindly supplied the sort of the uh, remains of a box at the start of this video and also a big thanks to Darren who runs replicator boxes and inserts who very kindly helped me out with the uh, cardboard inserts that go inside
inside this box. If you need to get bits for your uh, boxes, then do check out his website. He also does complete uh, replica boxes. So if you just want a really nice condition, one of these, he will do that as well. So do check out his website. Now, I hope this video has been of interest to you. If it has, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.